We're almost halfway through the year 2021, and I think it's about time I made a new My Favorite Plugins video. However, I don't want to bore everybody, so I'm going to narrow this down to the bare essential plugins that I think that everybody should have, or at least the ones that I personally use. So if they work for me, they'll probably work for you, but I do want to show all of the favorites. I just won't talk about all of my favorites. I'll just talk about the bare essentials. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, please check out some of the new playlists that I just put out so that you can follow along with tutorials based on audio compressors, equalizers, uh, I call them spatial effects, so delay and reverb. I just made new playlists that separate all these videos that I already have on the channel into these categories for you to check out. They're evergreen tutorials, so they'll, you know, they'll be valid years from now. Just check them out. They're already there. They're well made. Anyway, let's get to the video. ARC3 from IK Multimedia. This one enables you to do two things. Number one, it is a monitor calibration slash room calibration plugin. It works together with the IK Multimedia MEMS microphone. You can also use the older ARC measurement microphone. However, it is not recommended. I believe it is a fine upgrade from version two, also version 2.5, which really wasn't much of an upgrade other than the MEMS microphone. But yeah, version two was good. This one is even better. The two biggest features for me are the low cut and the high cut. You see how it has that low range? And if I adjust it, this moves. That means that the measurement is not being changed in that area. I've always thought that ARC didn't do a great job on the low end, at least for my speakers in my room. Bottom line is, it does a great job now, and if you need to, you can adjust it right on the main interface. It also has natural or linear phase. And of course, guess what's back? The virtual monitoring. So you can listen to laptop speakers, a smartphone speaker. I like to listen on the car or the LCD TV because I do mixing for video. So I want my audio to sound good even on the worst case scenario of speakers. My other option for listening is the Sienna plugin from Acoustica Audio. There's three different ones. This one is Guru, and there's Rooms, and then Reference. The main difference is Guru has the advanced options. Rooms is a little bit more simplified, and then Reference is just a change of the headphones. There's a bunch of different virtual studios you can listen to. They also have different speakers in each room. My personal favorite is Spitfire NAOS 10 Sub, but the idea is that you can mix through headphones and put yourself in a virtual room. You pick your headphones over on this little menu, and yeah, so my Sony headphones, let's see if they have the, okay, so 7506. It depends on how I'm feeling, but smooth is the one I usually go for. But yeah, this plugin has done a better job for me than Sonarworks Reference. So this is the one I'm using now. Yulian Loudness Meter. The volume of a mix, whether that's music or a TV show or a film, matters. Because there are different standards out there for loudness that need to be respected. Otherwise, you may have your mix rejected. So you come down here where it says default, and then you choose your reference target. Usually I'm going for either ITUR 1770-04. When I'm mixing, I might do R128. The old standard was A85. Also, they have different ones for online streaming, YouTube, Deezer, Netflix, HBO, Amazon, Disney Plus even. So there's a great variety of loudness targets and... I should mention that Yulian sent me 
a copy of the Pro version, although I would have purchased this eventually because it just rocks. Speaking of loudness targets, sometimes I just want something a little bit more simple, so I turn to Loudness Penalty Analyzer from Meter Plugs. Both of these plugins work well. This one works the best. It has just so many great options. It has an old timeline, you know, so you can go back 10 seconds or a minute or 24 hours, you know, so this is really cool. You can also do exports, an image file, or even a PDF to show the loudness. Very, very cool stuff. KOTOR from Auburn Sounds. This is a transient shaper plugin. A transient is that first peak audio, the loudest peak of the audio, and it can sound sharp, or it can sound dull, or it can sound perfect. Well, if it doesn't sound perfect, then the transient shaper helps you get it to what you would consider to be perfect. So Letty Mix Game Etch is uh, my second newest plugin. I bought this last month sometime, and let me tell you, it is going to come in handy for plugin reviews. It's going to come in handy when I need to balance my left and right channels for something like rhythm guitars that are hard panned or an acoustic guitar. I have not tried it on drum overheads yet, but the idea is that it volume matches different signals so that they're matched. Nor from Clevgrand. This is basically waves, renaissance bass, but better. The idea is that a electric bass guitar or a bass synthesizer, I, I think even a kick drum, I think I've tried this on kick drum before, but usually the bass instruments need to be able to punch through even on laptop speakers. This plugin helps us do that. So if you use this in combination with ARC on the smart on the smartphone setting, okay, then you can do some awesome damage. Listen to is a very cool plugin. It allows you to collaborate with other people so that they can hear what you're mixing, even if you are not in the same location. This really came in handy this past year, did it not? Uh, but yeah, you can even send this to somebody who's in Europe. I've tried that before. They were in Germany. I'm in the United States on the East Coast. And they were able to hear high quality audio within a web browser. Or they could have used a plugin, but they were using a web browser. Audio Movers also has an app, at least for Android. I don't know about iOS. But yeah, you can also stream to that as well. Very cool plugin. You do have to pay for it either weekly or monthly or yearly. But uh, yeah, they also just put out a public beta standalone program. Apparently they're trying to do some kind of music collaboration, like, you know, where people are playing live or something. I, I don't know. I haven't tried it out yet, but I may be checking it out in the future video. Voxengo MSED allows you to turn any plugin into something that has mid-side capabilities or some indifference. Same thing, but anyway, some indifference, MSED. I did a video about this plugin, and if I remember to, I'll link it below. But anyway, the bottom line is I have uses for making certain plugins that don't have built-in mid-side processing. I have a use for this plugin when necessary. And I would not want to mix without it. Regate. This is a noise gate plugin that allows you to eliminate the noise to a very large degree. It's built into Reaper, but you can also download it separately in the Re plugin suite, whatever that's called. Anyway, Regate, very cool. I've been using this for a pretty long while now. I'm gonna have to do another video on noise gates in the future because some better ones have come out. Not to say that Regate's bad, it's just that I don't like the GUI. <laughs> Reinsert. If you use hardware while mixing, this plugin makes that job so much easier. Basically, you set up your ins and your outs, right? And then you hit the ping detect button. And guess what? 
it gives you the perfect amount of samples for delay compensation so that you can mix or if you want to, which is what I prefer to do, record a track, bounce a track, and then you don't have to worry about having your hardware on, so it saves electricity in the long run. Anyway, on to Isotope RX6. RX6 is not the newest version of this plugin by far, but it still works very well. It's a refined plugin. Basically, I use it for noise reduction. I use it for kind of getting rid of the reverb. It doesn't really work perfectly every single time. Also, another thing I use it for is getting rid of mouth clicks when I'm recording voiceovers. You know, a lot of times you'll do lip smacks. Well, the mouth declicker will take care of that. There are a lot of other things that this plugin can do. It's also a standalone piece of software. Also, it has a very high quality sample rate converter. I have nothing but good things to say about RX. IK Multimedia's Tape Machine Collection. I have all four of the modules. I just bought them on sale not too long ago. And yeah, they all have their own purpose and sound. They have replaced Slate Digital Virtual Tape Machines for me. I believe this is the better plugin. Absolutely. IK did a stellar job on this, and I couldn't be happier than to have something that sounds quite close to a real tape machine, in my humble opinion. Is it exactly the same? No, but it also is cheaper in the long run. Oops, I didn't mean to delete it, but I did. <laughs> On to True Iron. Speaking of saturation plugins, we have this one, which is basically you get to try it out on a bunch of different transformers. So if you hover over each one of these voicings, it'll actually tell you what it's based on. Essentially, it's transformers that were inside of different audio hardware. So it, it, it livens up your audio and it, it can just subtly change and sometimes not so subtly change the way a piece of audio sounds. For me, I like using this plugin because it just it just adds that extra something to a track. I hate saying it like this, but it's, it, it makes it sound like it was recorded with analog gear or something along those lines. So if you recorded with your standard audio interface with a preamp that is you know, has an IC chip instead of a tube, or, and it doesn't have a transformer in the path, guess what? This plugin can help emulate that sound, and uh, you don't have to worry about buying expensive stuff because this plugin, I believe, normally runs for 40 bucks on sale. I've seen it down to like 33 Even if it was $50, which I believe it may have been when it first came out, maybe $60, uh, it is very much worth it, in my humble opinion. Anyway, on to Slate Digital, speaking of more saturation. So, in a way, because I have True Iron, VCC is slightly redundant, but it's not the exact same thing because VCC aims to emulate what it would sound like if you plugged in the output of your audio interface into a large format console's line inputs on each track. So that's virtual channel. That's the line input on a channel of an SSL 4000G, a 4000E, an API, I believe 1608, a Neve, I'm not sure which one, maybe 8068, a Trident 80B, I believe, and then finally an RCA, I forget the name of the console, but it's an RCA tube console. So you get all those options, and then it simulates going through the center section of the consoles, and then out. And you need to do that on your master bus or your mix bus channel. So this would technically be over here. And then I will get rid of this one. And then basically you just adjust your input and output, making sure that you're not slamming it too hard if that's what you're going for. Some people like it. like They like to slam the SSL, which, you know, that has its advantages. But the nice thing is, by default, it's already set to six decibels of drive. So you normally don't have to do that. Very cool little plugin. Finally, for the others folder, we have Trigger 2 from Slate Digital. Trigger helps you with your drum mixes. 
Because if you recorded some bad drums, some poor quality drums, or maybe you don't have the best microphones or the best preamps, maybe you don't have the best room to record in, well, guess what? You can replace your kick drum, your snare drum, your tom drums with this plugin. I typically will replace the kick and the tom drums on poorly recorded material. That could be my own, by the way. I am lucky if I record good quality drums. It's just the way it is. A lot of times you don't have time to get a proper tuning of the drums because people are lazy or they're impatient or whatever the case may be. Plus, I'm not always recording in the best room, so Slate Trigger allows me to get a high quality drum sound on a tight budget. Next up are channel strips. Magenta is Acoustica Audio's sampling of Manly Labs hardware. So for this one, it's the Massive Passive along with, I forget the other one, like the Vox Box or something. I don't know. I'll put a list on screen or something of all the different modules that Magenta 5 has. By the way, I'm using the Alternative Black Skin because I like it better on my eyes. The red just is really hard to look at when you're mixing, especially late at night. So Magenta 5 black skin looks great. Kind of reminds me of the Sansamp 21. <laughs> anyway, on to Ozone 9. Ozone 9 has a lot of cool modules. The low-end focus. We have the master rebalance. Of course, my favorite is the maximizer. You can also reference, so do A, Bs, you can play music and compare it to your master or your mix while level balancing it. You can also see how your music will sound with low quality or high quality uh, compression formats. And finally, it has a very high quality dither called Mbit Plus. So Ozone 9 is a plugin I would not want to mix or master without. Next up, we have Pink 4 from Acoustica Audio. This is their API hardware sampling. You get something like six equalizers, two compressors. It's just a very expansive plugin. And I love that API sound. There's something just high fidelity about it. I can make tracks that sound so wimpy, sound like they were recorded in a million dollar studio. And uh, yeah. Speaking of which, another great compliment to Pink is the Solid State Logic samplings from Acoustica Audio. This is their Sand plugin. This one has, I believe, five equalizers, three compressors, and it just sounds great. You can mix so many different things with this plugin. It's not funny. So honestly, if I had to choose between all the different Acoustica Audio equalizer plugins, I would go with Sand. It just has a lot more versatility when it comes to the cue control, and you can really either crank it up or crank it down. It's a very, very good channel strip plugin. Finally, we have the Virtual Mix Rack Bundle, which is what I purchased back in the year 2014 when it first came out. It comes with an 1176 Revision D compressor, which sounds great on guitars, vocals, certain keyboards. Try it on a bunch of different things. The FG401, which people don't really talk about too much, it is based originally on the channel compressor for the Solid State Logic 4000, I believe, or at least just the channel compressor in general. And then they expanded it to include more controls along with a transformer. And I don't know what the different circuits do, but bottom line is this is a, I call it the sleeper compressor because a lot of people don't even talk about it. And it's very versatile. In fact, out of the two compressors, I would go with FG401 because it just can be used on so many different instruments. If you go down the presets, you can see even Slate themselves think it sounded good on a bunch of different things. Next up, we have FGN, which is a Neve 1073 equalizer emulation. Sounds great on vocals in particular, but it can sound good on a lot of different sources. Finally, we have another SSL emulation. If you look really close, it says 
Brit 4K EQ. So this is taken from the SSL 4000. I believe it is the black knob. Don't quote me on that, but the FGS is another good option for when you need EQ. So really, the, the virtual mix rack bundle, you get a lot of value for your dollar. I'm not sure what it costs these days, but I think I spent $150 on it, and it was money well spent. If you do the math, that was about $38 per plug-in. Not bad at all. Speaking of equalizers, here are the ones that aren't in channel strips, so I had to talk about them separately. First of all, Coral Baxter, which is a sampling of the Dangerous Music Bax EQ. I believe this plugin is still free, so I have no problem recommending it. I don't normally use the presets because this plugin really only has a few controls. It sounds so good on so many different things, but particularly on the mix bus or while you're mastering. The Dangerous Music Bax EQ would cost you around $2,300. So, uh, yeah, the fact that you can get this plug-in for free and it sounds basically as good as the hardware, that's a really good deal. All right, next up is Fresh Air from Slate Digital. I guess technically this isn't an equalizer, but it does other things than EQ. But I'm, I'm throwing it in the EQ category because it can do a lot to enhance either individual tracks or entire mixes. I have used this on a few different newer mixes and I really would not want to mix without it. Next up is IIEQ Pro, which I have to censor because it puts my email address on here, but uh, I'll add some different bands and uh, then I'll put the screenshot up. But basically this plugin is the Poor Man's FabFilter Pro Q. And I don't say that to be insulting. In fact, I'm that poor man <laughs> who bought this instead of the Pro Q. But the bottom line is, if you need a clean equalizer with a large variety of bands, this is the one to get in my opinion. Unless you can afford Pro-Q, at that point you should get Pro-Q. Speaking of clean equalizers, Volco Audio's Q American series, and I only have the 10 band equalizer up, but I have the two other ones, which are based on the API 550A, API 550B, and API 560. These plugins, all sound clean, but they have that kind of signature API sound. They also use barely any CPU. So in a very large mix where I can't justify using pink on every single different track because my computer would explode, then Volco is what I reach for. It's a good alternative to pink. Nova from Tokyo Dawn Labs. I'll just put it this way. If there's a track that sometimes sounds a little muddy or sometimes sounds a little harsh, but not always, then I put Nova on it because it is a dynamic equalizer. Now you can use it as a normal equalizer and it sounds good in that matter, but guess what? The dynamic EQ is the key feature to this plugin. And on top of that, there is the gentleman's edition which expands the controls even more. Nova's great. I would not want to mix without it. Next up, audio compressors. First of all, Arturia. Arturia has three compressors, but the one that I can't mix without, well, I guess I could use the Slate Digital one, but this is the one that I prefer over the Slate Digital one, and let me show you why. You click this button right there, it expands it down, and guess what? They have this awesome little control called compression range, where you can set it so that it doesn't go over a certain gain reduction, because sometimes you don't want it to compress really, really hard. You also have a high pass filter, a low pass filter. You don't have a side chain filter with the slate version. You also don't have a mid only or a side only. All this stuff, time warp, all these controls make an already great compressor even better. Loudmax. This is another freebie plugin that I don't understand why they released it for free, but I have donated to this guy because you know what? This plugin gets used 
on bass guitar, acoustic guitar. It probably works well on a bunch of other different things, uh, including the mix bus, obviously, for mastering. Loud Max is free. If you don't have this plugin, I don't know why you don't have this plugin, download it now. And yeah, currently it's at version 1.38. FabFilter Pro DS. This is another plugin I would not want to mix without. Why? Because it reduces the harshness in my tracks. Now, yes, I can use TDR Nova, but guess what? Nova was not out when this plugin was purchased, number one. Number two, I think that Pro DS might do a slightly more transparent job. Now, truth be told, I've been looking at that Oik or Oak Sound Soothe. That plugin looks really cool, and it may eventually, if I buy it, replace Pro DS. But for now, and for the past few years since I've owned this plugin, and I wish they would make a scalable version of this, by the way, but anyway, Pro DS sounds really good. It does a stellar job, and if I didn't have this plugin, then my mixes would sound harsher than they should be, including my voiceovers. Smart Comp from Sonable. I basically use this as the last compressor in the chain after your hardware emulations or other things like that. And the reason is, is because I may not always have to use it. I'll typically use it as just clean volume leveling. And the key feature for me is the spectral compression. This makes the plugin very, very transparent. So in combination with character compressors, this plugin gets the job done so that you can get the mix done quicker. White 2A. Wow, why is that so large? Hold on. Um, well, that's not good because that means I cannot... <laughs> I can't see. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I don't know what happened there, but this is IK Multimedia's a LA-2A emulation. The LA-2A from Teletronics or Universal Audio, whatever you want to call them, it is a classic hardware compressor that is typically used when recording vocals, sometimes used when recording bass guitar, definitely used while mixing. I have used a real one with Access Analog and... I would just say that this one sounds more like Mix Analog's LA-2A emulation because it's smooth. The real one that's up on Access Analog, I hate to say it, it can sound a little harsh. But why is this a classic piece of hardware? It's really simple. It's very easy to use. You set limit or compress, then you set your peak reduction so that you're getting enough gain reduction, but without it destroying your track. And then finally, you adjust the makeup gain to taste. And that's it. Three controls. Maybe four at most. The LA-2A, it just sounds good and it's easy to use. That's why it's a classic. Okay, speaking of classics, this one is a new classic. I believe it came out in 1997. The FG Stress module is an emulation of the EL8, so Empirical Labs, Distressor Hardware Compressor. And the hardware compressor is an emulation of different types of hardware compressors from the past, because at the time that it was released, the vintage equipment, you could only get it on the used market for the most part. There weren't really audio plugins because Pro Tools was in its infancy, computers weren't very fast. So you still had to use hardware, and the Distressor was like the go-to recording compressor, and still is for many studios. I wish I owned a couple myself. Bottom line is, I now have it in plug-in form. I purchased FG Stress. This is my most recent plug-in purchase. It was on sale for like $49. Anyway, excellent plug-in. It works on so many different sources. It's just clean but it has like a little bit of grit it's just I, I like it i like what it does to level out audio bottom line and the monster this is kind of the opposite of fg stress although fg stress does have the nuke option 
The Monster is an 1176 all buttons in processor emulation. It works great on drum room microphones, on the drum bus itself, for parallel compression. It even has a built-in mix knob, which makes that easy if you're using this plugin as an insert, which most of the time people are. Sounds great, and it's free, I think. I think it's still free. Anyway, final compressor. This is Black Rooster Audio's VLA-3A. This is based on the Universal Audio LA-3A hardware compressor. And guess what? I prefer it to the LA-2A. It has a cleaner sound. I think it works on a lot more sources. I'll just put it this way. I don't know if I'll keep using this plugin as much because I have FG Stress now, but here's the thing. What does this plugin have that FG Stress doesn't? It doesn't have a lot of knobs. So again, like the LA-2A, we have the limit or compress switch. Then we have the makeup gain knob. And then we have the power button. I don't know why this, okay, the switch does work. I wasn't pressing it properly. So you can press it either, either there or you have to click on off. Anyway, look, great plug-in. I will still keep using it because it's so easy to use and it gets great results fast. That's the bottom line. By the way, if you have an old version of this, you should download the newest version because the old version could only get so big. I believe this was the old version size and now it can go up to even this big. Wow. So I believe it's 4K ready at this point. I'll put it back to 150. Finally, spatial effects. So delay, reverb. Let's start with the course. Not that I use course effects very often, but when I need one, guess what? I want the Blue Cat Audio course. It's free, it sounds good. Why not have it, right? For delay, my go-to Sound Toys Echo Boy. I'm still using the old version of this plugin <laughs> that came out in 2014. Oh yeah, I need to upgrade. I do, I do. Anyway, Echo Boy sounds really, really good. It just sounds good, bottom line. If you need a delay plugin, it has so many different presets. It has just excellent sound quality. And I have nothing but good things to say about it. If I need delay, this is the one I usually reach for. Haze 2, if you have a mono source that you want to stereoize, this is a great option because number one, it is affordable. And number two, it is mono compatible, which is very important when it comes to these stereoizer plugins. Not all of them are mono compatible. This one definitely is. Most recently, they upgraded it so you can save your own presets and it fixed a few bugs that I ran into when I originally reviewed this plugin. But uh, anyway, yeah, if I do panning, I will actually use this plugin because it sounds more natural. No pun intended. But yeah, great little plugin. I would not want to mix without it. Micro Shift from Sound Toys, just like Echo Boy, this one is excellent if you're going for a subtle delay sound. Not that Echo Boy probably couldn't do the same thing, but this plugin simplifies a great sounding piece of hardware and the results speak for themselves. When I need something to sound big, but not have a bunch of reverb or just, basically this makes tracks sound three-dimensional is the best way to put it. So you don't want to put it on every single track, but for like lead vocals where the, the, the artist does not want a bunch of reverb or even a little bit of delay, but you still want that track to sound big and bold and up front. This is my secret sauce, okay? It also sounds good on guitars. If you have like some kind of keyboard that you want to stand out, then it also works well for that. All kinds of uses. Just try it out on the different sources, but the bottom line is I love using this on vocals that are supposed to sound quote unquote dry. Finally, my go-to reverb plugin. I had a bunch of reverbs originally loaded up for this video, but I had to say which one could I not live without? And it would be Nimbus from Exponential Audio. This one. 
one can be used on so many different sources. Let me show you the different presets that are in this plugin. You'll be amazed. Look, look at this. Page after page after page of presets. You know, the list just keeps going, you know? <laughs> but anyway, oh, wait a minute. This plugin will be updated as the years go on and it won't get old because a classic is a classic for a reason. The bottom line is if you need just one reverb plugin that covers all your bases, Nimbus is the one I would recommend. And the fact that you can now buy this on sale sometimes, very, very cheap. There's no reason not to get it. Before price was a barrier for many people, but if you just wait for a sale, then you can get this for a very, very good price. And that about wraps up this video. Oh, I forgot to mention Nimbus is 4K ready. So this is the normal size of the plugin. If you hit this plus button, look how big that gets. Jeez. On a 1080p monitor, it's big, but not on a 4K. That's about it, guys. Uh, let's see. The preferences. And then... um. Yeah, I'm using, I believe, yeah, it says I'm running the most current version. Good. Which was actually from over two years ago. Anyway, good luck to Michael Carnes in his retirement. He's the guy that made this. Michael Carnes, for those who don't know, he also used to make Lexicon's plugins. That's why Lexicon plugins have not been updated in a very long time because Michael Carnes went on to make Exponential Audio and now he's retired. That man knows his stuff, and I wish him the best in his retirement. And with that, I'm going to wrap the video up. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If there were some new plugins that I missed, or maybe some old classics that I've missed that are your favorites, feel free to leave a comment below because I'm always willing to check out new plugins as long as they add something to my audio engineering palette. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. Again, check out the tutorials playlist that I'll list below.